In today's episode, we're going to be upgrading from this tired old Tundra grill to an all new modern late model TRD Sequoia front end and installing an LED light bar along the way. Alright, take number two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> trying to recreate the scene from Toy Story where they're like, Oh, he's got, oh, oh, look at the tiny present, and then... There's a nice little one over there. I need to play the DJ Khaled. Yeah, the, <laughs> the DJ Khaled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> bing, bing, bing. And we hope it gives you inspiration as well. I have this uh, 2021 Toyota Sequoia TRD grill that I uh, purchased from Sparks, uh, the Toyota Sparks, TRD Sparks, whatever, I don't know. If you're a Toyota person, you know what I'm talking about. But apparently this will fit right up to the um, older Tundras because the Sequoia has kept that same grill shape over the years. So we're gonna hopefully place this in place of our old one here. That one's just a bit tired and worn out. And since I got those new headlights, I really wanted an updated look for the truck as well. So if you recall, these headlights were actually provided to us by a company called Auto Saver 88, and they have actually provided us with this um, LED light bar that we're actually gonna go ahead and install behind the grill as well too. And that's gonna give us just a little bit more illumination at night. And uh, it's gonna be helpful for, you know, for off-road and camping and there's no lights around. So we're gonna take a look at this and install this as well too. All right, let's start by going ahead and taking off this old grill here. Chad. Someone might be using the driver to, uh, as a jack stand for their scooter, so I'm gonna have to do this. It was mine anyways. <laughs> Wait, is it? That one's gone. Party. Oh, yeah, it I broke know. loose. Did it? Yeah, it broke off. Oh, the tab back there broke. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I can't resist from doing this joke. Hey, you like my grill? <laughs> Just sheared off. Wow. I mean, rusty. Rusty I nickels. I guess if that works. Let's see if this thing fits. Does it not fit? Did the internet lie? Yo, this is not scurvy. Why? Whoa. Just over that a... Yeah, it, it, so it needs like a top trim piece. Yeah. Of some sort. That's what it looks like. But, yeah, you know what? I must have missed something entirely, but. Yeah, cause I mean, this looks close. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, they did say there was going to be like a gap at the bottom yeah. and some people were like talking about building a little like trim piece obviously we are missing something here looks like there's going to be a top trim piece that uh you know will cover the top here and finish that off but other than that i mean it does fit up with everything else so let's just go ahead and install the light bar though and i will see if i can find this trim piece but I feel like you're already filming. I am. <laughs> okay. So in the box here, obviously this is gonna be the LED light bar itself. It's nicely packaged in there, but you can actually see this is uh, a curved light bar. Hopefully that shows up on camera, but it's got a slight bend to it. So it is curved. Anything else that's in the box here 
have your hardware and your wiring as well. Looks like some nice insulated wiring here and it's got a uh, relay as well as an individual fuse set for it and then your on off switch that you can run to your cabin. I might actually change this out for something a bit more um, kind of OEM looking I guess. I think I have something in the in the hardware bin that I could use. They give you some, uh, some nice brackets and some rubber isolators in there it looks like as well as the allen key to uh, you know, set these allen keys and mount them. And of course it's got some customer support contact information and um, it's kind of a general mounting solution and how to connect it up to your wiring. So right. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look and see um, how exactly I wanna mount this thing in there. First of all, we'll start by installing the brackets with the instructions included. After that, we'll mock up and place the light bar to find the desired location. Then, we'll take our supplied wiring and route it from the light bar location to the battery area. Alright, so here's that other switch that I was talking about. We're gonna actually probably we'll install it first with this switch, make sure everything works, and then and then I'll cut these wires and um, put terminal lens on them so we can run it to this switch here. This is more like an OEM style kind of rocker switch and uh, it'll fit in a lot better than this one. This one should work fine, but I just would prefer to use this. This is gonna be a case where it's actually easier to go from inside the truck and back through the firewall because this actually has a uh, little disconnectable harness that we can hopefully pass this through something to um, instead of passing the whole switch through because that would be really hard to squeeze behind that grommet. Located in the driver's side footwell, roughly above and between the brake pedal and the e-brake, you'll find the rubber grommet behind the carpet. Down here on the right side of the engine bay, you'll see that there's the grommet and then that yellow black and red wiring is actually where the switch wire is coming through. through. So that's really probably one of the hardest parts in wiring is um, just getting it through the firewall and getting it routed. So now for a quick mock-up though, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and set the fuse and the relay aside for the moment. Those can really sit anywhere right now. And what we wanna do though, we wanna go ahead and take these terminal, these ring terminals and um, put them on the battery. And uh, then we're gonna run our wires over to the actual light bar wiring itself and just uh, make sure that it actually turns on and everything. First, we'll put the power source directly to the LED light bar to ensure that it works. Then we'll start to locate where we wanna put our relay and fuse setup. I ended up putting a large bolt through an existing core support hole and drilling the relay mount to fit. Then we'll put our ring terminals on the battery to supply the power. Here I'm tightening down the relay to the mount. After that, I'll run the power through the plastic shroud directly to the LED light bar. Then I'll trim the excess length of wiring so we don't have to tuck away that extra wire somewhere. Stripping back the wiring will expose both the ground and power to be spliced into the LED light bar.
All right, now that we know that's working, we can go ahead and work on the final part here, which is gonna be mounting this up back here. Got a few ideas here as far as mounting this goes. You can see how close this bracket is to the transmission cooler um, mount here. So I'm gonna see if I can try to at least make a little extension up to here so we'll have that side covered. And then over here on this side, what I'm thinking is hopefully um, mocking up something that will run from this, um, this really hard mounted core support uh, AC line bracket down here. Get that to focus. And then coming up to here should be real simple and straightforward and that should be plenty rigid. Normally, I'd use steel bar stock to do a job like this, but I didn't have any on hand. We'll be working with some thicker gauge aluminum sheet that's both sturdy and easy to work with. Using the latest CAD, cardboard aided design of course, we'll cut out a rough template of what we want and then mark out the bends and holes to drill. Moving over to the workbench, we'll put the aluminum sheet in a vise and cut out the rectangular shape using an angle grinder. After that's done, we'll drill out the holes for mounting up to the pre-existing bracket. Using a bit of heat helps easily bend the aluminum to the shape that we want. Making sure the bends are the correct shape is a really important part of the process. Tapping the metal with a hammer or using vice grips really helps the bending process. More heating, bending, and forming for the second bend. We want to make sure and get this right. For the final installation, we have the bracket meet up with the light bar using a two inch spacer and two and a half inch bolt to mount the bar. To cap off the wiring job, we'll use these heat shrink solders that work wonders and then waterproof it all with electrical tape. We'll then secure the wiring out of the way using zip ties. Taking the job inside the truck, we'll cut off the existing switch and strip back the wiring to meet up with the new OEM style switch. Let's temporarily loop these around each spade here. So now that we know which wires go to each terminal on the switch, what we need to do is actually just make a spade connector so that it will plug into the back of that switch. And then we're gonna be set to go with this thing. Unfortunately, the OEM style switch required so much cutting and filing back that it did it off camera. So much for painless, am I right? 
We got in the box, man. All right, me boys. It is uh, a week later, and I have ordered the grill piece that we were missing. It's right here. Just kidding. Those are my real teeth. All right. Let's see what seventy dollars gets you in these days. Okay, you got big boy things. Big boy stomping. Oh, 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 oh man. Yeah. That is a spoiler for that the C600. Is, yes, it actually. Oh, it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> the grill is too big to create a spoiler on it. <laughs> All right, let's test how she looking. This has a centering peg here. You can see we still have room for a lot of the light bar. It does block a fair amount, but you know. I guess if it comes down to it, we can all sort of like lift it up a little bit. Yeah, I tested it the other night and it, you know, still actually gave off a fair amount of light. So that's good. I don't know. It's not the biggest deal. So let's just attach it to this so okay. we can do it for testing for mock up purposes. It's gonna be more flush once we push it in, but. Looks good. Yeah. We're gonna go through and uh, we'll have to like vinyl wrap your bumper now. Mm -hmm. Rep this is going to look a lot better once we clean up the front end. It's super dirty from all that snow in it, everything. Okay, now you're one. You're gonna. Yeah, those look like that. It should just be more or less like a kind of aggressive threaded screw that goes in there. Yeah. In those two spots. About that hole and that one. Oh yeah. Oh, that's money. A little drink, okay, okay. Let her drink. Oh, she's clean enough to eat on. Look at that. The hood yeah. Um, it's like everything else is pretty much there. I think so. That's definitely not going in there. No. Those might have to pop out. Oh, they're the square peg types. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, that's not going to do us any good, is it? I'm wondering if we could drill out the entrance of these. You think? Yeah. Just bop them in there? I think so. I feel like that's probably going to be our best bet. And it should be really easy to drill out. Yeah. yeah and I think try. I have new ones of these for that I actually bought for another. All right, bro. What are you doing here? I'm drilling the thing. Yeah, I'm so, taking a... Tell the people the purpose of what you're doing. So, what size is this? My vision is no longer as it seems. Quarter inch. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing is taking a quarter inch drill bit here, and I'm taking these uh, little body plastic uh, screw uh, retaining rivet things. Oh, those were the original ones out of the truck, right? No, I have a bunch of these, so oh, I'm okay. trying some okay. new ones. Um, and I'm just drilling these out to match the size of the pins down here. That way, you can see I already did one. That way, this thing has something to be able to snap into, like a Slim Jim, and we'll retain in the body, hopefully. Cool, okay. So, I mean, they might even make the right size for these, but I, I don't know. Probably something you had to buy separately. Yeah, I should have looked at the hardware. It was really not a good idea, but. Well, we'll, uh, we'll catch up to you once you're done uh, putting dandruff on your lap. There you go. Okay. I think that worked. Yeah, I think so. So we just gotta bolt the rest of it on. All right, good. Oh yeah. Oh. Bolt ring sound. Look at that nice new hardware here. I, I. <laughs> Everybody hated that. Everybody hated that. So, a couple of things. Um, I tried to find what information I could on putting this thing on, and everyone just kept saying, yeah, she bolts up, she'll bolt up. You just need to have some kind of trim down here because there will be a space, which I'm obviously fine with because that's where I want the LED light bar, at least for the moment, and it really doesn't bother me anyways. Um, but that being said, the 
mounts that come down from the top of the hood to the bottom of the grill yeah. are different on this Tundra versus you know the Sequoia that it comes off of and I didn't see anyone say that um, so that's gonna have to change I will buy those but for the purpose of the video um, we're just gonna go ahead and wrap it here and I'll show you I'll link them put a picture on screen show you which parts you actually need to order in order to make that work as you can see it's not really bolted in down here I don't think it's really gonna do anything for the moment yeah, you can kind of see the grill in here that we're talking about the, the brackets to the grill but outside of that I think it looks really cool yeah and really um, yeah I think it looks awesome and really updated the front end of this truck I really like how it kind of matches with the uh, um, the newer headlights that that same company also provided us so thank you uh, to I believe it's auto saver 88 they have a family of companies um, we'll obviously have the part and link it down here below but thank you big shout out to those guys for providing us with that LED light bar as well as these headlights um, speaking of let's go ahead and take a peek inside the truck and I want to show you what that ended up looking like with the switch in there yeah so we can see um, this is the switch that's wired up here I had to actually um, <laughs> it says painless installation is the the brand of this switch but uh, to make it fit with this little bezel here was a gigantic pain in the ass I had to do a lot of trimming and um, sanding back there to make that work um, but it ended up looking pretty good and pretty flush this is actually a different um, set of wiring entirely I still don't really know what this is for the previous owner did that but it is that same type of switch which you can see this looks so much cleaner than this does so you can see it's illuminated when the light is on there and yeah just simple looks pretty good fits a lot better than this does All right guys, well that's a wrap on this. So I'm really happy with the way the LED light bar turned out. We'll throw in some video clips here of using it at night. Uh, this is really supplemental and not something I really needed. Um, so part of it being blocked by the grill is not the biggest deal in the world. Um, we might move it up eventually, we'll see. No, but thank you to our partners over at uh, Auto Saver 88 and uh, all those associated companies. Um, thank you for uh, the LED light bar and the headlights really updated the uh, front end of this truck a lot in tandem with this um, newer Sequoia grill. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions on the installation of this thing and uh, what you'll need, just go ahead and post a comment down below. And thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.